hi guys welcome back to the next part of the tutorial and in this tutorial as promised you are going to start modeling a table before you get on to model any stuff it is actually nice to have some reference images of what you want to model it may not actually be the exact kind of stuff you want to model like the exact size you're going to make your modifications in blender and also try as much as possible to use your real life dimensions all right so that it will not be way enormous to the camera more about this later all right without further ado let's get on to modeling a table um normally others delete um, their default cube but i find it very very necessary to keep my cube so working with this cube we are going to first of all resize it to look like a tabletop all right let me turn on my screencast key so um, you see whatever i'm pressing all right so at the bottom right you're going to see my screencast key that panel is being brought up by in if you press in this panel will come up the options panel will come up and this item panel consists of your selected mesh dimension and scale rotation and location for instance if i scale this it affects the scale and the dimensions right for the table i already took my measurements and it would be nice to follow these measurements let's start with the table model select this cube then give it 1.1 meters along the x axis you have to select this and include 1.1 it resizes the mesh along the x axis and then on y give it 0.5 and on z give it 0.03 all right so now if you zoom in closer you now see this is a table top so move it a little bit from the origin take it a little bit up so that it will have space for the legs to um come out of it all right so for the legs add a mesh which is going to be a cube and this is how you add a mesh in blender use shift plus a and you have these menus come up and the one you need is this mesh and click on the cube but normally you're going to have from plane to the monkey option from here you need to turn on some add-ons in blender for you to have these other options but let's deal with uh, what we have to do at hand add a cube and it's going to be this ginormous because this is the default dimensions given to a cube in blender so if you want to make anything out of it you're going to give it your own dimensions and scale all right since this is added give it 0.035 on the x axis then on the y axis give it 0.5 then on the z axis give it 0.7 all right so this is your table leg actually one of your table leg so move it to the edge of this table on the x axis all right then move it up uh, try to move it inside to align all right mm, this is always very hard to um, get in place without using what i'm going to show you next okay uh, don't worry i know what i'm doing all right you see it's very hard for you to um match this resize cube to the tabletop you see it's very hard because no matter how you try to resize it you always see a space or a gap between the two and this is where you need to use your snap tool which snaps your mesh to any other mesh vertex face or edge all right so if you want to turn on the snap tool so that you can easily snap this come over to this icon here that looks like a magnet click on it then click on this drop down button to change it to edge because normally if the snap tool is just selected like this it snaps in increments now let me move further away so that you see what i'm doing it snaps in increments you see like snaps from one grid to an another but this is not what we want because we can't get the exact stuff to snap to the tabletop we need to come down here and change it to edge then go back and click on g to attach it to your mouse button so now if you move it closer to the edge of this tabletop it snaps it there accept it with your left click and then you see it's giving you the exact alignment with the tabletop let's talk about this cursor and origin for now let's turn off the snapping the origin of this mesh 
is at its center this is it this is um the origin is where you have the green dots if i click on this tabletop this is the origin all right if i am to rotate this it rotates around the origin which is the pivot in the table leg if you have to rotate this it rotates along the origin so the origin is always the center of a selected mesh so now we need to have two legs because normally tables do go with two legs especially the one we are creating now so to duplicate you don't need to add a cube and resize it in game because it's gonna be too tedious all right so the best thing to do is to duplicate this mesh which will come with the same scale and dimension all right so to duplicate a mesh in blender you use shift d when you click shift d and move your mouse the mesh is already attached to your mouse all right so now we need to move it along the x axis so that it will not be different from the other one we duplicated it from so click on x while it's still attached to your mouse and then move it along the x axis and we are still going to have this problem of aligning it very well because no matter how we try we will still have some errors it looks it looks like we are right here but we are not all right so you see the gap here so select it um go back and turn on your snap to move it along x and then snap it here as usual so now we have the exact alignment yeah this is the exact alignment all right so now basically we have a basic table skeleton because it's not yet complete and the table we are going for you've already seen it in the animation it has something to cover itself at the back most table do actually so we need to add that cover at the back so let's add a cube huge as normal along the x-axis give it one meters along the y give it 0 0.035 and along the z z axis give it 0 0.48 meters you can as well make this 1.03 okay so now you also still need to align it move it along y axis yeah and then along the z axis let's look at it from the back view all right all right it's it snapped well turn off the snapping and here is what you're going to have let's talk about the original cursor in blender in the first video which is the interface um tutorial that uh, we did i promise to talk about this cursor and this is the cursor the cursor is over here if i click on this and then um, click on somewhere else it's going to move the cursor from the center of the origin all right so let's return the cursor to the to the center of the origin if you click on this we notice that this is the origin of this selected mesh and this is the cursor i want this origin of this mesh to be at where this 3d cursor is because we are going to talk about a uh, mirror modifier very soon mirror modifier always mirrors a particular mesh that it is applied to before you mirror any mesh you have to make sure that you have its origin at the exact place you want it to mirror itself that won't make much sense now but on a long run it's going to make sense to make this origin of this selected item be at the center you have to right click on it and then come down to where you have set origin and here you have a bunch of options set origin from geometry to origin origin to geometry origin to 3d cursor and the other ones so the one we need right now is origin to 3d cursor so if you click on this it moves the origin of this item to where the 3d cursor is so now if we are to rotate this it's not going to rotate around itself as before it's going to rotate around the origin all right even while you want to scale if you scale it's scaling from the origin we just moved the origin from where it was to where the 3d cursor is let's head on to applying the mirror modifier let's delete this for the meantime to delete an item use x and accept the delete all right click on this then come down to the modifiers panel click on it and then add modifier click on add modifier you're going to have lots of modifiers here and to be frank with you you're not going to use all of it the one you really use is the one under generate find the mirror modifier and when once you click on the mirror modifier the object that you selected will automatically be mirrored with respect to the origin all right so if 
the origin was here let me return the origin to the geometry if the origin was here the mirrored object will also be here like since i've applied the mirror object both of them are overlapping the mirrored object and the original item are being overlapped okay so that is why we had to move the origin from the item to the 3d cursor so to take it back right click and go to set origin and origin to 3d cursor so now we have this so whenever we move this it moves alongside with the mirrored item now let's um, start adding a cobalt to add a cobalt add a cube and resize it give it 0.45 meters along the x-axis and 0.5 meters along the y and also 0.45 meters along the z-axis this is going to be a cobalt casing so be in front orthographic view we talked about this before move try to move this to the top right corner of this table okay so that you can have something like this to work more on this because this is not actually the full cobalt that we need we need to make it hollow to further have more freedom to work on your mesh you have to be in the edit mode so currently as you can see we are in object mode and we have lots of interaction modes here we have the object mode we have the edit mode we have the sculpt mode we have the vertex paints the weight paints and the texture paints so the ones we will always be switching to and fro easily with is the edit mode to the object mode so if i want to take this to the object mode come over here and select object mode and it gives you the freedom of working only on this particular selected mesh as you can see you can't click on any other mesh here because you did not select it into edit mode you can only work on these ones that you selected let's go back to the object mode to easily swap between the object mode and the edit mode make use of your tab key with your selected object click on tab to take it to the edit mode go back to object mode. select any object and click on tab to take it to the edit mode all right so let's click on a box tap on it to go to edit mode so while in edit mode the object that is active is going to have these outlines and in edit mode we have three selection mode currently this is the vertex select mode which enables you to select vertex and vertices vertices is plural and vertex is singular you are able to select vertices which you can select and move with g to resize and also we have the edge select mode which enables you to select the edges of the selected mesh that's in edit mode so you can just click on any edge and try to play along with it so the g r and z operation works here just like in object mode so if i click on g it has the ability to pin this to my mouse cursor and i can move it wherever i want to i can click on r to rotate it so this is where you have lots of freedom to organize your mesh this the way you want it to be s which is the scale also works here too all right and this is the next select mode which is the face this is the first select mode that enables you to select the face of any mesh that you've taken into edit mode so as it is here i can click on s to scale it i can click on r to rotate this face and you can see it's rotating along the origin and i can also click on g to grab this face and move it wherever i want to what we want to do here is to insert this face how do we insert a face in blender you insert a face in blender using i make sure you write all these short keys down right because the more you learn the more you get familiar with all of this so i is for insert it helps you insert any face and you can also extrude we have the extrude option which helps you to pull out parts of a mesh from itself that can be done by pressing e so if you press e you see you have extruded this and if you go back to object mode you see you have a whole new shape all right so we can control z control z but in this case since we need the cupboards to be inside and they need to have their own spaces we are going to extrude it inwards all right so now we have part of this mesh covering what we are doing inside we also have the x-ray mode which we can click over here and see it's going to make us see through our meshes in case we need to move what we were pushing in a little further all right so this is the x-ray mode it may help it helps you see through your mesh and the shortcut to it is alt z on your keyboard object mode if you go back to object mode this is what you are going to have so now you have your basic table structure which is the table top the, the table back cover and the table sides and also the cupboard container i think we really spent a lot of time here and stick on to the next tutorial and we are going to make use of other modifiers and you're going to learn more 
tips and tricks in the next tutorial thank you for watching see ya